Good morning, everybody. Sorry I'm not there in person. Thanks for sitting through this in this format. I'm Laura Gardner. I'm a fourth year PhD candidate in Steve Jacobson's lab, and I'm going to talk to you today about recent progress I've made in my primary research project and the next steps. I have here a picture of a fairly typical super deep diamond. These diamonds constitute the deepest physical samples that we have of our planet. And in the mineral physics lab here at Northwestern, we have a suite of 50 of these from a known super deep locality in Brazil. Super deep diamonds form below the lithosphere between 250 and maybe 750 kilometers depth. So we're looking at as deep as the lower mantle here. And um, they represent just a few percentage of the total global diamond population, so they're pretty rare. They often include impurities inside them, um, other minerals trapped inside the diamond itself. And by studying the composition of these mineral inclusions and the entire diamond, we can learn a lot more about the composition of the deep earth. The main goal of my research is to find and characterize hydrogen from the transition zone and the lower mantle that can help us constrain the amount of water in the deep earth and its origin, whether it has been recycled to Earth's surface or whether it has been trapped inside the Earth since the accretion of the planet. But there are several other goals along the way um, that I hope to achieve for each diamond sample, and those include finding high pressure phases, mineral phases this is, within each diamond, constraining the depth of each diamond formation, and developing or improving our non-destructive methods for recognizing hydrous silicates within diamonds. And that's because these silicates are where we think a lot of the water is stored inside these super deep diamonds. Currently, I have collected a bunch of data from Argonne National Labs, the advanced photon source. And I'm in the process of analyzing the X-ray diffraction data I've obtained from there. And this image at the lower left shows a typical X-ray diffraction pattern. I use this to identify the minerals within a diamond sample. And once I've, I'm, I've done all that for all about 50 inclusions that we have data for right now, I'll confirm those mineral IDs with Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy and Raman spectroscopy. And each of those processes could have a talk of its own. Um, but what I also hope to do after that is to perform cathodoluminescence to look at the different growth phases of each of these samples, because it's likely that these diamonds grew in different parts of the deep earth or the earth overall um, and picked up different minerals at each stop. And all of this is in service of being able to point to a sample and say, we see these different minerals inside it, and this indicates um, a deep earth origin, and maybe we should cut this diamond open and study its hydrogen and see where it came from. I wanted to mention a few other things I did this summer. I got to go to my very first in-person conference in all of graduate school. I was also in Honolulu at Goldschmidt, like Nilu, and I um, gave a contributed talk there and at CONFRESS, which is the Consortium for Materials Properties Research in Earth Sciences. Unfortunately, that one was virtual, though. At the tail end of the summer, I also started making some improvements to the Raman system with Steve, and this will hopefully allow us to um, work with different types of samples more easily. And with that, I will take any questions. Laura, well, could you say a few words about what you've actually done for the Raman system? Uh, yeah, what we're doing right now is pretty simple and non-technical. We are adding um, a little stage on a slider so that we can switch between a higher power and lower power objective um, inside the Raman system with the near infrared laser so that we can, um, if we can change the focus and also um, use 
we might find that the higher power objective is better for some samples than others. We're working with some biological samples right now that are pretty interesting, but that we think we need a, a higher power objective on. And um, so those modifications won't change the overall function. It'll just make it easier to use. 